Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. I'm your host, Chris Arnold. Man, I'm excited about this show because we love talking with students who are utilizing radio and showing you the success that they have. Again, one thing I tell you about it and what it's doing in my business, but again, proof's in the pudding when you can sit down and talk with students and just really kind of tear apart their experience with radio, what they're seeing. So if you're tuning in today, really excited about having on Charles Flaxel. Here's what radio can do for the fix and flip. Again, a lot of times people do wholesale, buy and hold. You're going to learn that Charles is a fix and flip guy. So he's utilizing radio for that. And so it's going to be interesting to look at his numbers because there's bigger pops on flips than there are wholesale. And so I think we're going to see some stronger dollar per dollar returns, et cetera. So Charles, welcome to the show, buddy. Glad to have you, yeah. mate. Hey, thanks, Chris. It's fun awesome. to be here. I mean, Dude, for anyone that doesn't know you, like, where are you at? Where are you located? Give everybody yeah. a little bit of a nutshell of uh, what you got going on. How yeah, long? in Portland. So Portland, Oregon, you've probably heard about us on the news. I don't live in the riot zone, so <laughs> I'm safe from that stuff. But um, yeah, that's that's uh, where we're uh, doing most of our business. And there's what they call the Willamette Valley. So there's like a kind of an I-5 corridor from Eugene, which is like 120 miles south of Portland. And there's various cities in, in between. And so we're kind of working about 50 miles south of here up to the Portland and the metro area. Well, I like it. I like it. One of you know, I run a virtual staff. Um, so actually, my disposition person lives up in Oregon as well. Oh, really? So she's, yeah, right up there with you. Because I think she saw your name and go, hey, he's in my state. So <laughs> she always uh, updates me on what's going on up there with you guys. So pre-radio, right? Um, you're a fix and flip guy. Everyone loves this question because everyone's looking for how to generate, you know, distressed seller leads. You know, you and I were talking. I was like, what are you working on in your business right now, Charles? And you're like, it's always kind of the same. It's like generating more opportunities. I've got money to buy. I've got crews ready to rehab, but I just need to pick up more flips. And so before radio, how are you trying to create opportunities? Well, we did couple things this year we've done direct mail on and off in the past just never been a big fan of direct mail um why, why is that I don't, it's funny you say that I, I, I'll just, throw that out there people want to know why you have no idea what their motivation is you know what everyone tells you to do you got to do direct mail and so you know which postcard you choose what size you know do you do the one with the little zipper envelope or do you do the yellow letter or the little postcard or the big postcard or a picture of you or not i mean it's just there's so many different things that just make, makes your head want to explode. And then, you know, you got to deal work. with like, what you just described. Work, like, I know return mail. And then it's, you know, then people call you up and they're, you know, I don't want to sell my house. And why are you bothering me? And uh, it's not the space that I want to really be in. And, you know, we've done it and you send messages, you know, you send it over and over and you got to manage the repeat mail and then you put them on a CRM and you got to call them. And it's just, yeah. It's not really. I mean, I guess I could hire somebody to do that, but that's not my really. That's Absolutely. Not my. And, and if you're tuning in, right, and you're newer to real estate and you're like, should I do direct mail? Yes or no? Direct mail works. But what Charles and I are saying, and I completely agree with him, it's a high maintenance marketing channel. It's something that is going to require a lot of ongoing maintenance, ongoing variables, decisions. Like you said, picture of the house, not a picture of a house. Is it pink or a blue post? I mean, it just goes on and on. So just know it works, but it's definitely a lot of work to work that particular system. So besides direct mail, anything else you were doing to generate flip opportunities? Well, yeah, we've been doing Google AdWords for a couple, two and a half years or so like that. And that, that's been decent. It's been steady. It's expensive. Um, but it's, you know, it's been moving us forward. <laughs> this just year, we started doing some Facebook ads and that just did not. Do well. That's well. funny. I have not yet come across a person yet, Charles, that says that they've done well on Facebook. Again, here's what I hear on Facebook. Just for, again, if you're tuning in and we want to help you guys know what we know and, you know, if we can help you learn from experience, it's a high volume, uh, volume uh, source, meaning you're getting a ton of leads through it. But the problem is the quality is just super low. That's what we've experienced. Has that been the same for you, Charles? Oh, yeah. They're like retail people, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen them come through there. They want more than what their house is listed for on the MLS right now. And I'm like, 
Yeah. I just haven't come across anyone that's had really good success with Facebook. Now, pay-per-click, Google AdWords, uh, we do the same as you do, Charles. We utilize that source. And again, I feel like it's a good source that generates some, some decent opportunities. So you and I are definitely on the same page on what we've experienced around marketing. So let me ask this, like, you're doing Google AdWords, you're, you're doing some direct mail. What caught your attention about radio? Of Everything you could choose out there, why'd you go, you know what, I think this radio thing's gonna be a good fit for our business. Well, I'm listening, listening to a bigger podcast, pocket podcast, you know, you were on with Brandon and it just clicked and I'm like, dude, we gotta try that. It just sounds so straightforward and direct and uh, something that's just, you know, turnkey really. And so right after I heard that, you know, I told my wife, and I'm like, we got to, we got to give this a shot. You know, this Chris guy's getting it done. So I think we could do it too. And so yeah. sure enough, you know, just, I don't know from, I think from hearing the podcast to actually like getting on the air only took six weeks or something. Interesting. So I want to hit on two points you just made there. <clears throat> you were talking about the ease of the management. So let's compare it to direct mail. Do you feel like you've got to do a lot of work to like maintain the radio campaign to keep it running? Or do you really, again, I say set it and forget it. That's my terminology, but people want to know you're, we're talking to a student that's utilizing it. Does it require a lot of work to keep it going or is it set it and forget it? Your opinion. So you like listen to those Ron Perel infomercials late at night about the little rotisserie ovens, you know, he said it, forget <laughs> it. <laughs> I heard people say that and I don't, I wasn't around when those were happening, but someone had told me like, yeah, that said it, forget it term was used for like rotisserie cookers. <laughs> it's so very funny you said that. I had a couple of people tell me that. Yeah, no, it is. It's totally, you just, you know, you record, you negotiate, you know, that's, that's, you know, one of the points you got to do to negotiate your rates and your times and all that. But for us in our situation, that went really smoothly, which I was happy to have. And then one of the bigger challenges is recording our ad because COVID, we were trying to figure out a space and, you know, usually you go to the studio and record it. So here my wife and I jam on our walk-in closet with the iPhone, you know, or trying to do our commercial, but it worked out and we went to air and it was brilliant. We got it re-recorded. They sent a tech out, I don't know, engineer out sometime in August and we re-recorded it. So yeah. that's a Bit better, but I love that you guys hid in the closet and recorded it. But hey, that's probably the quietest place in the house. So I totally that's what they told us to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's go back to the statement you're talking about the setup, right? Again, if you're listening, as we talk about radio, we want to give you every facet of it, right? So people always ask me, you know, what's the biggest challenge with radio? It's always negotiating with the radio stations because um, we're buying radio like you buy real estate at a deep discounted price. But every student has kind of differing experience, but I find more lean toward if I ask this question, they're going to give me a two to three, but let's ask you, Charles, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like radio was super hard to set up, one being easy, where would you have ranked it in the sense of just setting it up and negotiating? Scale uh, one to 10. Yeah, easily, I'd say two, two and yeah. a half. So if you've been listening to these, that's primarily the number that comes out. But occasionally we get students to go, you know what, it felt like a seven or eight. But really, it's the only hurdle um, you have to get over in, in actually setting it up. So let's talk about success that you've seen so far. You're a fix and flip guy. Um, you and I were talking, right? Um, you got an ad spend of about $2,000 a month to get started. And that's what we tell everyone. It's $1,000 to $2,000 to get going. Um, but so far, since you've been up, you launched, you know, right at the end of June. Again, we had 4th of July, so probably not a lot happening till middle of July. Uh, but right now, you've got two fix and flip properties um, that you're working on right now that you've already picked up. Yeah, yeah, to picked up two deals. It was just a super simple call, you know, pick up the phone and... Hey, so let's talk about that. that. You and I were talking. Fix and flip versus wholesale is much different, right, or buy and hold. Because fix and flip, we're looking for really deep discounts, right? Because we're not the end owner. So in a competition setting, if I'm going up against a wholesaler, it's going to be hard for me on the fix and flip route because they're going to pay more than me. So let me ask you this. On the two deals that you picked up on radio, did you have any competition? No. Well, one of them, they just heard it and they had a bad tenant and they wanted them out and she gave me a number and everything. That was just really a no-brainer <laughs> so there's no one else yeah, i'm calling you here's my number and you're like good i'll take it it was just ready to go it was that simple yeah i mean i have to be home and i you know always keep my phone on me you want to answer those calls live if you can 
that or who, if you have an MBA or whoever, but um, just sat down, typed it in, and I'm like, look at the estimate. I'm like, 260, and she wants, you know, 100? <laughs> so that's, you know, that's a, that's a no-brainer, you know. So that was easy. That was a lay down that you got on radio. And what about the other one? Did you go up against five or six other people? Well, I didn't. I know the guy owned it free and clear, and he had a bad tenant as well. And he said he'd actually talked to another investor about three or four months ago. And he, I think it was 175, I think he was going to sell it for. And he's like, my bot. And he just told me, like, right away, it's like, I'm done with this person. Here's my bottom line, like 155. You know, and I did some, did my homework on it. And I'm like, well, that, that's a deal. <laughs> it's a totally deal. So, I mean, no, not at that time. He just called, he'd already, so, I mean, so basically, essentially, that other investor had helped me negotiate it down to, I think, that 155 from the 175. Because so he pretty much teed it up for you. Absolutely. He, yeah, he had. Yeah, exactly. And so that's he gave crazy. me the bottom line. I was like, let's, yeah. let's play ball. <laughs> You know, and, and if you're tuning in and you're, you're looking at marketing channels and you might have a marketing channel where you feel like every time I go out to an appointment, it's me against, you know, X amount of other investors. I can tell you that what we experience on the radio side is because we're not list dependent, we're not getting called into appointments with sellers where, you know, they responded to postcards when they got 50 of those, Right. Um, or they got hit with a bunch of text blasting. So the great thing about radio is primarily you're on your own when you show up at that appointment, which in Charles' case, I think is so important for his business because it allows him to get that deep discount that he needs to run a flip business because he needs it deeper than we do on the wholesale side. And Charles, as I was just kind of listening to your business, that's why I think radio is a really good fit for someone like you, like a fix and flip person. Right. Well, and, and even some of the, the profit margins at the end of some of these deals is still going to be better than stuff we've gotten, you know, through our regular marketing channels, you know. So, yeah. hey, I mean, one of those might even push what, what are some of the numbers we've done in one of our best deals ever. Like yeah. 80, I think it was 83 or 85,000. 83 or off that radio. Yeah. So you and I were talking, you've got, you know, over six figure, we'll say conservatively, and you and I were talking about the numbers, but you know, you know, over a hundred thousand uh, on these flips that you've got running. Um, again, I, I always like to give true numbers, dollar per dollar return, right? And I always tell people for every dollar you spend, you're going to get three to four dollars back. So in that case, in Charles' world, if he was spending two grand, you know, a three times X on that would be six, right? Four times would be 8,000. But you and I were doing some napkin math because you're flipping, <laughs> And you're pulling out such bigger profits, but what's a conservative dollar per dollar return that you're looking at potentially? I mean, geez, right now we're looking at like thirty dollars for every thirty dollars. Well, I mean, that's huge. And again, we're not if you listen in saying that everyone gets a thirty dollar return, but we're letting you know what's possible, particularly when Charles is in a good market, you negotiate a heck of a price on radio for two thousand dollars for a good station that's generating call volume for him. And he's gonna hit, you know, a thirty dollar return right off the bat and out of the gate on this thing. I mean that's that's huge. You and I were talking, what we need to do now is just focus with you and help you maybe go get another station and get that call volume up even higher, um, which I think is great. So, so now that you've been running radio and you're kind of looking back a little bit, what are maybe one or two qualities that you appreciate about it versus maybe, uh, you know, Google AdWords or direct mail, what you've seen so far, what do you like in most as a characteristic? Sure. Well, I know well, Google AdWords is expensive for one. And you still get a number of ones you got, well, more competition, pricier. And then there's still a number of tire kickers, you know? So with, with the radio, it's, it's a really focused audience and they're, well, it's less expensive and they're, they're motivated and you're usually, you know, the only guy in the room, you know? So it's, uh, it's been, it's been awesome so far. Yeah, I like that. So focused and speak to the quality of the lead out of the amount of conversations you had. Did you have to go through a lot of, uh, you know, leads via radio to get a deal? Or did you find the conversion was pretty high in comparison? It's really high. I mean, you, did you discard the couple that were maybe didn't hear the message well, and they're like, they just listed their house and, you know, they called you. So, you know, you kind of push those aside. I mean, we're talking so far, the numbers are, are showing up to be for the two of the, you know, legitimate calls we've gotten so far, we're, we're taking down to like 20, 15, 20%. 
Yeah. Wow. 15 to 20%. So that means maybe you're converting one out of that's five. Let's be safe. Would you say that you're pretty confident that for every 10 calls you get off radio, that will equal a deal? I, yeah, I mean, our number is better that, but I, I don't want to get too optimistic <laughs> right now. Right? Like, I'm beating that out as well. Um, but yeah, people always ask, you know, what is the quality? I think you can generate that. Charles, Charles is saying his is like one out of five. Um, you know, I'm being conservative and going one out of 10. Um, but again, compare that to direct mail. And I can remember Charles, my numbers. I think we were ranging between one out of 60 to one out of 80 direct mail calls to be a deal. That's it was, it was high. It was, I think, yeah, when we did it, I think our numbers were something like 80, 80, 80 to 90 even. Yeah. yeah. So it's high. So by comparison, you can go one out of 80 on direct mail. It works. You're just going to have to, you know, do a lot of sifting and filtering to get down to the gold or on the radio side. What we're saying is it's much easier to get a lower call volume, and pick up those deals, particularly if you're new, if you're trying to get out of the rat race of working a nine to five, you want to be a full-time investor. The last thing you need to do is launch a marketing channel that just ends up being a second job for you. Right. At least on radio, it's small call volume. When your phone rings, you know it's radio because you programmed it to tell you that and you're taking a low call volume and picking up those deals. So I love it. So if you're listening, a couple things. Uh, first and foremost, if you always want to put a face with the name, um, go to YouTube, uh, subscribe at Chris Arnold Real Estate, and uh, we're always dropping additional content over there that we're not doing on the podcast. So definitely join us and subscribe to uh, our YouTube. Secondly, at this point, we just bring student after student at this point, seeing success with it. You know, I was so excited to roll out radio. Charles, I don't know if you've ever taught anything, but this was kind of one of those things I had in my back pocket that I knew was a game changer. And I had kind of held it back. Does that make sense? And so I'm excited to share it because if you're going to teach something, teach something that you're passionate about and you know works really effectively. And radio is one of those things. It's one of the most effective tools, kind of resources that I've had in my back pocket for a long time. So again, yeah, check to see if your market's open. Um, you know, I can't remember how many students were up to at this point, but I know that markets are sold out. But again, call, do due diligence book a call and see if your market's open. And you do that by going to wholesalinginc.com forward slash REI radio. Again, that's wholesalinginc.com forward slash REI radio and book a call, see if your market's open. So Charles, wrapping up again, people love these because they want to be able to hear the authentic story of if something working and I get it. I get thrown ideas and concepts all the time and nothing worse than picking up something to find out it doesn't work. Right? It's like, Oh, that was a waste of time and money. So your stories and you coming on just help students go, okay, this is the real deal. But if someone's still on the fence, Charles, and they're like, man, should I do this radio thing or should I not? Maybe I should go after another marketing channel. You know, maybe I want to do X or X. What would you say to that person that's riding the fence? What would you tell them about radio to help them make that final decision? Well, it's been enormously successful for me so far. We've tried a lot of the other, you know, ingredients in the cupboards and they haven't produced the results that radio has and the ease of it. So not just results, but, you know, we're talking a, a very, uh, you know, focused call volume of people that are very motivated. You're the only, uh, it seems like the only man in their, in their you know, living room to, to negotiate with them. And just the consistency of just, you know, pushing a button and letting it go. And it's just, it's, it's awesome. So the phrase I hear you saying is I'll boil that down. I feel like Charles is saying, man, look at radio because radio is easy money, right? It's, Making it's easy money. It's yeah, easy money. yeah, pretty much, pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. That's how I'd sum up everything that you just said there. So awesome. Well, Charles, thanks so much for coming on, buddy. Appreciate you sharing the story. I know it will help people It'd be inspiration as everyone's trying to figure out how they want to pivot for 2020 and get ready for 2021. So thanks for the value that you shared today. You bet. We'll have to uh, regroup in about a year and I can tell you about the even. Absolutely. I, I will we'll definitely circle back. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Awesome. Um, so to the rest of you, thank you guys so much for joining us. And until next time, we will catch you soon and add more value. Talk to you later.